Beam analysis. Beam analysis. Please add this to your notes. A beam is a structural member that carries a load that is applied transverse to its length. So if we look at this, the load is applied, sort of transverse is applied at this angle. Um, it's on the girder, okay? So it's sort of perpendicular to this. Beams are used in floors and in roofs, and they may be called floor joists or stringers or floor beams or girders, and a lot of times girders are the ones that um, will be called those that support the beams. And we've looked at floor joists before, but now when we're talking commercial structures um, like bridges and large buildings at the school, a lot of times they'll call them beams. So we already talked a little bit about chasing a load. If you have a load right here in the middle of this thing, then that load has to be applied. If it's in the tributary area of this beam, it has to be applied to this beam. And then that is chased to the nearest girder. And that then is chased to the nearest column for whatever this tributary area is for this column. That then is chased all the way down to the ground. So that is load chasing, which we've looked at a little bit. Um, static equilibrium is when all forces on an object act um, equally and it remains stationary. The beam must be in static equilibrium to successfully carry loads. If there is more force on the top than what it can support on the bottom, that is the instant that it fails. And that is usually a bad thing if you're on the bridge or in that building. So um, this is a little bit wordy. But static equilibrium is just when all forces are balanced. It might be a simpler way to write that. Um, also for static equilibrium, loads applied to the beam from the roof or floor have to be resisted by forces from the beam supports. So these are the beam supports on these two sides. If you have an applied load here, the reaction is supporting it up here. And these have to be equal and opposite to the applied load. Equal and opposite, that's Newton's, you got it, law. So the resulting forces are called reaction forces. Um, just a little bit more information on that. Now, moving into what reaction forces are. They can be linear or rotational. A linear force is called a shear reaction. Um, and a rotational reaction is called a moment reaction. We're going to take a look at the F, R, and M in just a minute. Um, so reaction forces have to balance the applied forces. Uh, and, and I guess we could take a look at this right now. An F is just referred to as force, R is rotational, and then M is moment. So when we look at these diagrams, um, then this maybe will help explain it a little bit better. Definitely want to screenshot this one. So if you have a beam and it's on a roller, and you might have this because concrete um, or steel can expand, and if it, it expands, then it needs to be in a position where it can expand outward this way and contract inward this way, and um, it has that freedom to move. So a lot of times you'll see bridges have these types of systems, rollers in place. And in that case, the only force on this reaction force is straight down, uh, or the action force. The reaction force then is straight up. So you only have one force with a roller beam support. A pin connection means that it cannot expand this direction. It cannot contract in the other direction. So um, and it still has its weight, so it has a Y force and an X force. A fixed support, if you have one that's attached to a wall, if you apply a load down, I can draw on this, this is pretty cool, huh? If you apply a load down, then um, the reaction is it's, it's trying to sort of, or the action, I guess, is trying to rotate around this fixed point right here. So the reaction is a moment rotating in the other direction. It also has a downward weight and um, oftentimes can have a force pushing if it, if it might stretch, often uh, in the x direction also. So fixed supports against the wall are uh, the most complicated. So here again are our beam types. You have a simple beam, a continuous beam with multiple supports, and then a cantilever. Cantilever are the ones that have that moment. So I'm going to go back a picture. That's this one right here. The fixed support is a cantilever type beam. A fixed one with, will have that's fixed on both ends will have a moment on each end because if you apply a force in the middle, then essentially it's pushing down right here, and this is trying to rotate in that direction. This is kind of trying to rotate in this direction as the whole beam kind of bows like that. Then that's where those rotational forces are. That's that moment. If it's propped or fixed at one end um, and supported at the other, then you just have one moment on this end here. And then another option is just an overhang. So these are um, six different options of beam types. A simple continuous cantilever, 
and then fixed, propped, and overhang. So taking a screenshot of these is probably a good idea. Um, now, simple beams, to calculate loads on here, right now we have a simple beam. It is fixed on this end with a roller on this end. We have an applied load. And so our free body diagram looks like this. The triangle represents fixed. So we have this um, horizontal arrow, the x direction. Now note, when there's no applied horizontal load, you may ignore the horizontal reaction at the pin connection. So if we don't, um, if, if there's no noted horizontal load, we don't really have to take this into consideration. Um, and then we have our two uh, y direction forces, our reaction forces here. So fundamentals in physics, the principles of equilibrium, the sum of all the y forces, that's going down and coming up. The sum of all those forces has to equal zero, otherwise it's moving. It's either falling down or it's getting pushed up. Has to equal zero, so that's what we have to use, that information. The same thing in the x direction. You don't want it to be sliding out in one way or the other. You have to assume that if it's stable, then the sum is zero. And the same thing for the moment. All the moment forces, there cannot be a, a moment, something that's rotating. It has to be in equilibrium. It has to be equal to zero. Let's look a little bit more at a moment. A moment is created when force tends to rotate an object, and I sort of alluded to that. So if you have a force applying here, then that tries to rotate this object down in that way. The magnitude of the moment is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance. That was really well underlined there. So here's our force. That's our moment arm. The moment arm is generally perpendicular to this. So moment is force times the perpendicular distance. And usually it's perpendicular, so we may, uh, you may not always see that there. Um, and then that's how I wrote it.